Is this the cab company? Yeah, I called about a half hour ago for a cab, and he hasn't gotten here yet. Yeah. No, I have to do an instructional video today for REH, and I really got to get moving. So. <coughs> that, that might be... Come in! Taxi? Wow! Oh, I just couldn't okay. work out free. I got one downstairs. Uh, great. You want to help me get... Uh, sure. Ah! Oh, hey, guitar! Yeah, that's... Uh, Woodstock! Uh, Macho! The Village! Do you know how long it's been since I had a guitar in my hand? No, how long has it been? Geez, I thought you might know. I have no idea. Wait a minute. Uh, how? Uh, uh, we we got to get... We... Greg, how? <laughs> hour or so we can talk about some some of the ideas and some of the techniques that I, I use as part of my playing um, do a lot of neat two-handed things and some warm-up exercises that might also help your alternate picking a little bit uh, arpeggios just a whole a whole bunch of stuff it'll be it'll be a lot of fun but uh, before we do any of that we should probably tune together so here's a high E B
Alrighty, we're going to do some warm-up exercises. Uh, a lot of you probably just want to jump right in and do all the flashy stuff, but it's a good idea to probably warm up first. The guitar is an instrument that you express yourself emotionally with, but aside from that, it's also a pretty can be a phys you know, pretty physically demanding activity. So you want to warm up. Um, this first exercise that we're going to do or warm up is an exercise that I do. It takes place only on the high E string and the B string. Aside from being a good exercise for different finger shapes and that kind of thing, it's a real good alternate picking exercise too. This particular one is going to start, it's going to be in the key of A minor and it's going to start on the note D with the little finger and uh, we're going to start with a downstroke. And you're going to play C and B right after that. Got this kind of shape. Uh, the fourth note is going to be C again with the index finger. Uh, get used to sliding with the index finger because you're going to be doing an awful lot of that. Uh, continue. D, E. So so far we have this. Then you're going to go back to the D, back to the C. That's everything on the high E string. It's going to be a 16th note oriented pattern. You'll recognize it and as soon as we get going. Uh, right after that, continue the notes B, A, and G on the B string. And slide up to the A again on the B string with the index finger. Continue play B and C on the B string. It it's probably sounds a little confusing. It's not. Let me just play it slow once. Right after that, I'm going to continue end the whole 16th note phrase with D and E again on the high E string. So you can hear it's like a, it's a one measure lick with 16th notes. And it's So you can hear the 16th notes. Um, a good way to remember this sequence is think one, two, three, one, two, three, slide, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, slide, one, two, three, four, because that's where the index finger is doing the sliding. Um, we're just going to continue. It'll be the same thing. Keep it in A minor and you'll start on F this time. It's going to be the same sequence, but uh, it'll be a harmony to that. So I play everything slow. Take it up one more. Starting to know A this time. Same sequence. And you can end with C. The C would be the one of the next measure. So if you play it uh, comfortably, you'll hear the 16th notes. the uh, descending version of that, uh, you start on the note C, that would be the one. The only difference between the ascending version and the descending version is the index finger is now going to be sliding down on four. Or one instead of... So you're sliding down. Everything else is exactly the same. Uh, start on C. So you can see it's the same thing. So slide. It's the exact same thing backwards. Just remember the slides are in the same place, but they're going down now instead of up. 
So I'll just run through the whole descending scale or exercise slowly. When you get to this point, uh, to turn it around so that you can continue going up and down, you know, without stopping. Uh, think of one slide down, one slide up. So you'll let me just run through that real slow so you can see what I'm doing. Starting on the D that we originally started on. But the second time, sliding up from the E to the F. So then you can just continue the whole thing over and over again. That sets you back up to where you were before. And just continue up and down. section is going to involve the other four strings. It's another warm-up exercise and it's going to be a ascending and descending scale that just goes straight up and straight down. Uh, the weird thing about this is that it's going to be based on four notes on a string as opposed to three, which you've probably, a lot of you are probably used to. Uh, this particular scale with the exception of the very first string, we'll have four notes on every string. And again, it's going to be the index finger doing all of the work. The index finger will be playing two of the four notes that, that you hear. So let me uh, give you an example. Remember, I said with the exception of the first string, the lowest string, you'll be playing four notes on per string. So start on note A. Because of the way we're going to descend, I'm starting with an upstroke. So if you want to do it the way I'm doing it, start with an upstroke. You'll play down on the note D on the A string, and then the index, index finger will go up to E and play two notes on the A string. And you play F and G as you normally would, so you can see. Uh, just continue. Play down on the note A on the D string, and again the index finger will slide up to B. And that will be an upstroke. Continue. C and D. Uh, one more string. Hit the note E on the G string. And the index finger will slide up again. Getting to note F. So the index finger is getting two notes on every string. And then end with G and A. So the whole scale slow. <laughs> That's the ascending version of the scale. Might not seem like a big deal now, but uh, it can be real beneficial because we'll add another octave onto that, and I'll show you in a minute. That kind of thing is easier for me. It's I'm always going to the adjacent string with the same stroke, and it's, for me, it's just a lot easier. So there, I played a two octave scale and uh, haven't even gotten to the. B string or the E string yet. Um, the descending version of that is going to be the exact opposite. I'll be playing three notes on the G string and four notes on every other string. So whereas we hit this E on the way up, this time we'll play the E on the D string on the way down. So you will have ended with an upstroke, supposedly, and A, G, and F. And then you play E, D, and C and B on the D string. Those are your four notes. Uh, on the A string, you play A, G, F, and E. And then play D, C, B, and A on the low E string. So you've got four notes on every string except the G string when you're descending. And you should end with an upstroke so that you can continue in other words, the first, the last note of the descending scale will be the first note of the ascending scale, and vice versa. So the descending version is the next uh, warm-up 
exercise is pretty much the same thing, but we're going to tack on the third octave. And it's going to be the same idea. You're playing four notes on the string. The only problem now is that you have to jump up two frets to hit this note B. So you will have ended here with an upstroke. You have to jump up two frets, hit the B, and then again you slide up to the C and add D and E. We're going to end it with only three notes on the high E string because of the way that we're going to descend. So just play F, G, and A on the high E string. So the whole thing is slow from, from the low A. And there's your jump. So uh, just work on that and you can play a three octave scale playing four notes on the first string. To descend from this scale, I'm going to have a, a completely different approach. I don't descend the same way that I ascended. I'm going to have four notes on the high E string. What this will do is, I ended the last note, the high A, with a downstroke. So I'm going to play four notes descending on the high E string. This way I'll end with an, an upstroke. I can hit the B string with a downstroke. So I'll be playing four notes on the high E string and four notes on the B string. Uh, now here's the weird part. I'm only going to play two notes on the G string, G and F. And the rest is going to be four notes. So you're playing four notes on every string descending except the G string. You're only playing two. And what this allows me to do is always be going to the adjacent string with a downstroke. So let me just go through it slow ones. Again, I'll end with an upstroke so I can continue doing the up and down version over and over again. Here's another approach to uh, three octave scales that might make it a little bit easier for you mentally to think about. By keeping the same shape for each scale, it might make it easier for you to see the scale and make it easier for you to play the scale. Uh, I'm going to stay in A minor, only this time I'm going to start on the note B, and I'll play four notes on the first string that I'm starting on, which is the low E. Play B, C, D, and E. And I'll play three notes on the next string, F, G, and A. And that gives us a one octave scale. If you look at that shape, the index finger is playing B and C. If you have four notes on the first string, three on the second, then that's your scale. Play the same thing right here. And then one more time. The picking is going to change. Uh, the way I descend. Um, because of the way I descend, I'm going to start with an, uh, an upstroke, just like I did before. And if that's the case, then the next time I get to the first note of the, the same shape, octave higher, <laughs> I'll have to start with a downstroke. Up, down, and then up again for the third octave. But the index finger is playing four notes, B, C, D, and E on every octave, B, C, D, and E. So uh, that might make it easier for you. Uh, to descend, I don't use the three identical scale idea. I do it differently because I always like to make sure I hit a, a adjacent string with a downstroke, especially when I'm descending. It's just easier for me. Um, but an easy way to think about the descending version of this is think four notes on every string except the high E string will only be three and the G string will be two. So let me just run you through that once. You will have ended with an upstroke on the note A. So to descend, you play out of this shape right here and then play four notes on the B string. 
So you've only got three on the high E string, A, G, and F, and then four on the B string, E, D, C, and B. Then only two notes on the G string, A and G, and four notes on every other string. Let me just play the descending scale slow once. going to the next string with a down stroke. Uh, so I ended with an up stroke and I can just continue the same thing using the identical shape idea going up and the hitting adjacent strings with down strokes uh, for the descending. Using that same idea for a harmonic minor scale can be really useful. Again, stay in A minor. We'll start on the, the G sharp, or the 7, and we play four notes, G sharp, A, B, and C, and then D, E, and F and just do the same thing in octaves, again. And descending will be the, exactly the same thing. You'll have three notes on the high E string, uh, two notes on the G string, and four notes on every other string. So let me just run that through real slow. a couple of weird shapes and let me just run through it real quick. Excuse me, I'm terribly sorry. I know you, you're busy and everything. I was just walking by the hallway and I heard the way you were going so fast on it. That's truly a maple. Listen, I know you're busy. Why not? I'll talk to you just a okay. little bit. Nice. Alrighty. Um, you start with, uh, you're going to start with... One more thing, sir. Is that coming that color or... I'm, I'm just... in the middle of the video right now. Doing you're right. When you're right, you're right. I'll listen. I'll talk to you later. Okay, I'm starting on the note F, and basically I'm going to pull off to E, and then keep it up. Fantastic. You'll have three notes on the high E string, like I said. You'll have F, E, and D, and you should have ended with an upstroke with the ascending scale. So the D will be an upstroke on the way down. You have four notes on the B string. C, B, A, and G sharp. I have two notes again on the G string, F and E. D, C, and B, and A on the D string. And then uh, G sharp, F, and E. That's kind of a kind of a weird stretch, but that's no big deal. Uh, all the way down to the D. So you're gonna have four notes. And then four notes on the low E string. C, B, A, and G sharp. So descending. And just play it over and over until you can go up and down fast. Another real good warm-up uh, is an exercise I use. It's ascending and descending four notes at a time on one string. And it's a real good control exercise for coordinating the left and right hand together. I'll keep this in A minor too. Start on the note A with a down stroke and the index finger, you get used to the index finger sliding around. The index finger will slide up to B with an up stroke and then you just tack on the C and the D. And then you just do that same thing over and over again, staying diatonically in A minor. The beginning of each four notes starts with a downstroke. And to descend, use the last note of the ascending scale as the first note of the descending scale. So you should have ended with an upstroke. That'll be the first note of the descending scale. 
and now the index finger is sliding, but it's playing the third and fourth note. And do the same thing over and over again. Uh, that's the toughest part if you want to continue going up and down. You'll have to slide twice down to the A because you're descending and ascending real quickly at the same time. So practice all these exercises and get comfortable with them, combine them all together, and practice them in different keys. I'd like to show you some of my favorite licks, some of the licks that I use all the time. And a lot of these won't necessarily be picking every note, so it'll be a little bit something different. Uh, one of the licks I use all the time is a, a lick that ascends and descends four notes, but I don't pick every note. I hammer on and then pick the high note. I'll do this one in A minor. I'll start on the note C. And hammer onto the D and hammer onto the E on the B string. I sort of have the 13th fret barred. I'm hitting up on the F. And then I'm picking all the notes coming back down. And what that allows me to do is get a lot more speed that way. I can add a note onto that just by sliding down to the B and then up again. I'll probably pick the B w along with all the other notes on the way down. You can do a lot of things with barring. I do a lot of things like that. I'm barring the high E string and the B string. I do a lot of blues licks that way. Um, here's another easy kind of lick that sounds kind of cool. I'll do this example in E. This will be like an E blues lick. All you're doing is uh, hitting up on the high E string and down on the B string on the note D and pulling that off to a B. Kind of a pentatonic thing. And then you're hitting the note A on the G string. And then you're going back up again. The way I'm picking it is up on the E string and down on the other two. But when I ascend, I'm hitting up on the B string. Let me just play it for you slow and I'll speed it up. That's one of my favorite licks. One of the cool things you can do with that is add, instead of playing the A, play the flat five, which in this case would be uh, B flat. By doing that, you just, instead of hitting this note A, kind of stretch that finger up and hit the B flat. It gives a real bluesy sound if you play it fast. And, you know, you can use that as part of a lick that descends or something. Um, the cool thing about barring licks is just by pivoting the third finger, 
you can do the same picking but get different notes by you know barring with the third finger too what, what I'm doing here is I'm hitting down on the B string up on the E back down on the D or the B string but the note D pulling it off to a B and then that same pull off is also a hammer on up to D again but instead of hitting up on the E this time I will have barred this finger I'm hitting up on the note G so let me just play it slow so you see what I'm talking about that's another lick I use a lot and again you can add that note on the G string and just kind of come up with variations of that kind of idea and that's one of my favorite licks another barring lick is uh, that I use in, for kind of a bluesy thing is oh, we'll use this example in E too slide down to the 10th fret bar these two notes and hammer on from the A to the B on the B string and then bar the third finger so you're hitting up on the note E and then pull that off so you have to you know hit down again on the B pull it off the thing you can add to that to make it sound real bluesy is the flat five it sounds kind of weird slow but it sounds cool when you play it fast pull the flat five off to the A again so you point B flat off to A and just play that sequence that's one of my favorite licks another uh, blues lick that's barring sounds similar to that this is kind of weird because you'll be barring with the second finger this time start on the flat five or the 11th fret of the B string even that would be the flat five hammer on to the B and then up on the note E so the second finger is the finger that's barring hit back down on the note B and pull it off then with your third finger reach up and hit the D on the B string the whole thing slow is going to sound like this it sounds kind of weird slow again but uh, if you play it fast it sounds kind of kind of nasty one of my favorites take that same barring idea and use it on some of the other strings you can go like right across the fretboard barring that's another thing I do a lot which is let me just show you what it is uh, if I was an E say E blues start on the note A and I'd hammer onto the B and then bar with the third finger up on the note E then hit the B again pull it off to A then just at, at that point after you've gotten down to the A just do a simple pentatonic hammer on to the B uh, to the D and to the E let me just show it to you slow so you see what I'm talking about at that point you're going to bar again and do the same sequence but on the next two sets of strings so what you have is the only weird part is when I hit that C sharp and that if I'm in E blues then that note works uh, technically if we were doing the, the, the exact uh, pattern all the way up I'd keeping it pentatonic I should have hit the hit the D but I'm not going to do that because I want to keep it easy for me and the last the last uh, shape would be um, 
minor third distance or three frets. So the whole thing sounds like this. Down VA because you're descending and ascending real quickly at the same time. So practice all these exercises and get comfortable with them, combine them all together, and practice them in different keys. Well, Greg, it's uh, certainly is a pleasure to be here out there in there. Uh, you've come quite the ways, haven't you? Thank you. <laughs> Greg, how? How? Well, uh, I'm <laughs> Greg, why don't you uh, play for the folks the very, very first thing I've taught you? Well, the very first thing he taught me, I, I don't know if well, I Well, that would be your C A minor uh, F G uh, half gain or full twist side of French. Try that. I don't remember that one. Just before. try it, Greg, all right? That last note. Mm -hmm. Try that way. Is that it? That's close enough. Boy, has he come, Greg? All the best. I'm going to get back to class now, and uh, it certainly was a pleasure meeting, and uh, <laughs> bye. He's a great guy. I hope I see him again real soon, like within the next 20 years or so. Well, time to have some fun. You get to use both hands on the fretboard. Um, I do a lot of two-handed things, and I try to make sure that when I do them, they almost don't sound like two-handed licks. They sound more like runs or extremely fast legato lines. It would be hard to do with just one hand. Uh, one of the licks I use a lot, and again, I'll keep this in A minor so we can be easier to talk about. It's a triplet pattern that's I usually use it in a descending form, but uh, let's go up to the Dorian position here in A minor. Um, we'll start on the note D, and what you're going to do is position the left hand on D, E, and F, those three notes, and the lick will actually start on the note G with the right hand. I use my middle finger because I do a lot of things where I'm trading off back and forth between uh, hammer-ons and picking and two-handed things and so this way I don't have to think about what I have to do with the pick. Anyway, we'll start on G. You're going to play that note. That'll be the first note. You just tap it with the right hand. Pull it off and you'll get the note F. Pull the F off to an E and then re-tap the F with the right hand. Um, you can, it's going to be a triplet feel. You'll start hearing it. After you've tapped that F with the right hand, pull it off to the E and then pull the E off to the D and then re-tap the E. So far we have this. Um, right after that, to keep the triplets going, you're going to have to hammer on to the note C with the left hand. And then you're going to tap the note D with the right hand. So we had D on the E string the first time, this time we'll have it on the B string. After you've gotten to that point, you're pretty much back to where you were when we first started. You just do the same sequence. Uh, to keep it going all the way across the fretboard, you'll only have to tap two times on the G string just because of the way the, the pattern is. After you've gotten down to the B on the B string and you've pulled it off to the A, the left hand by itself will tap the G note on the G string. The right hand will tap the note A on the G string. When you get to that point, just pull it off to the G, pull the G off, 
re-tap the G and then the left hand will tap E on the D string. The right hand will tap the F. It's going to be the same pattern. The shapes will be a little bit different, but if you know your scales and if you know what A minor is, then you just do the same exact idea. Take it down as far as you want. You can you know, until you run out of strings or until your hands collide with each other, which might create even a cooler effect. Another variation of that is a blues idea or a pentatonic idea. Uh, keep it in A, jump down here. It's going to be the same idea, but you won't be tapping as many times on one string. I'll start here on the note uh, D on the high E string. Uh, this time it's going to be a little bit backwards. You'll, have, you'll be tapping two times on the high E string and on the B string. And then if you want to get, if you want, just want to play it pentatonically, then you'll, you'll tap two times on the G string also. And two times on the D string and two times on the on all the strings. <laughs> um, if you want to get the flat five in there and make it sound really bluesy, then you'll tap three times on the G string. When you get to this point, instead of going to the, the note D, go to uh, E flat or G sharp and then tap on the E pull that off to the flat five pull the flat five off re-tap it with the right hand uh, pull it off get the note D pull it off re-tap the D just do the same idea except you'll be tapping three times on the G string so that a lot. You could go up again with it, you could de uh, ascend with it, but it's a little bit more difficult. I use that a lot. It's one of my favorite licks. And another good two-handed lick that doesn't sound like a two-handed lick, or it doesn't sound like an arpeggiated... Uh, that kind of thing that you've heard many times uh, is an ascending run that I use a lot. I'll do this one in A major. I'll start on the note E, and what I'm going to be doing basically is just playing three notes per string. Two of the notes will be with the left hand, and the third note will be with the right hand. The only difficult thing about this is that if you're not real careful, strings start ringing out because you know you don't have this hand over against the bridge to to mute anything, but. Just keep working on it and you'll you'll have it no problem, it'll be fun. Um start on E and just basically play E and F sharp and then tap the G sharp with the right hand. And do the same thing. This particular pattern will be the same shape on the first three strings, so after you've gotten there, just do an octave of the same thing. Just start here. You have to jump up a fret on the uh, on the B string. Then start it again. And you don't have that the last three notes because you run out of strings finally. But. Uh, You get a lot of speed with that, uh, probably faster than anyone's left hand if you, if you work on it.
I'd like to show you some arpeggios and some wide interval licks. Uh, recently, arpeggios have seemed to have become pretty popular amongst rock guitar players, and uh, they're very useful. There's a couple real advantages to arpeggios. Number one, they sound real impressive because they can cover a lot of ground quickly, and uh, more importantly, they look impressive because they can cover a lot of ground quickly. Uh, seriously, they they can sometimes help expand the sound of a chord. For instance, if you played an E minor arpeggio over a C major chord, you might it could help bring out the major seventh tonality of the chord or something like that. You can that kind of thing. You know, they 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 help widen the sound of whatever it is you're playing over. Um, some of the techniques involved in arpeggios are sweep picking. If any of you are familiar with that, then maybe this won't be that helpful to you, but if you're not familiar with it, uh, I have a couple of exercises for sweep picking. I don't sweep pick as much as a lot of people think I do, but I do sweep a little bit, and uh, well, I'll show you one of the exercises right now. This will be a, a C major triad, and it's going to involve two different positions. Uh, the ascending sweep will be a different position than the descending sweep but you can combine them both together and have a large two two and a half octave arpeggio so i'll show it to you i'm starting with a downstroke on the note c with my middle finger i'm playing the e on the a string then i'm hammering on to the to the g note of the a string this will all be one sweep downward. Uh, when you get to the D string, you you know hit that with a downstroke, and that's your octave. When you get to the G string, you play the E again, and then just kind of bar that fret. Um, to come back down, what I'm going to do is you hit that high E the way I do it, I hit that high E with an upstroke and then I slide up to the G with a downstroke and that's the end of the ascending uh, version of the arpeggio so we've sweeped until we got to the E string then we started alternate picking you get to that high G, that will have been a downstroke. Hit up on the, the the E note, and then you'll play this position. Just a different uh, position for C major again. And that'll be all upstrokes from the time you hit the E note. Uh, until you get right here, then you alternate pick again, at least the way I do it. So when you get to that C, you're going to jump all the way down to the G on the A string, and that will be with a different stroke. Down stroke. And then up on the note E of the low E string, and down again on the C, and then you can just continue that. Build it up until it gets faster and you're comfortable with it. Another approach to two octave arpeggios that I use a lot is a, a technique that doesn't involve so much sweeping, but it's more of a picking thing. And it's for, for me, a lot more comfortable, and you can play just as fast, and in some ways it sounds a little bit smoother. Uh, I'll give you an example. You start on the A string, we'll do it in C again. Play the note C on the A string, and then hammer on to the third, and then bar with your middle finger the D string and the G string. And uh, 
The way I'm picking that is downstroke on the A string, a downstroke on the D string, and an upstroke on the G string. And you're going to jump up two frets, or to the fret where your middle finger was, but with your index finger, and bar the B string and the E string. Hammer on from here, from the E to the G, and then bar up to the C. The advantage to this is that you can play a very fast uh, one octave arpeggio in a high position. That kind of thing. And, you know, to play it. That kind of arpeggio works nice for me. Uh, descending is a little difficult. You're going to pretty much do the same thing. Remember, you've hit up on the high C. And you're doing that same idea that we did back with the blues, the blues lick. Except, you know, keep it a triad. You have to jump back down here with your middle finger, hit up on the G. You just do the same thing backwards. The minor version to that is almost identical fingering-wise and picking-wise. Uh, all you have to do is make a couple of minor adjustments. Instead of hammering on a major third, hammer on a minor third, and you'll still have the same thing there with the middle finger. This time, instead of jumping up to this fret, jump, jump up a half step down from that, and but you'll be hammering on to the same place that you were hammering so you're you're just taking the third and making it minor and this is a little bit easier actually aside from just arpeggios and triads i do a lot of uh wide interval things that sound kind of like arpeggios because they cover a lot of distance but they're actually not they're just wide interval scales um, I don't have time to show you a lot of the things that you can do, in the, but I'll show you one lick, and this might be able to just open some doors. Um, this will be for E minor. I'm starting on the note A on the D string. I'm just playing like a pentatonic uh, form right there. And with the right hand, I'll tap to the A on the G string. Right after that, I'll jump up to the B note with my index finger of the left hand and then hammer on to the note D. So I'm picking and I'm and tapping and all kinds of all kinds of stuff. From that point you can you can do what you want to do. You could maybe just take it that high, maybe add on an E. You could add on a higher note. Any note that's in, in the key or any anything that you're trying to, whatever you want it to sound like, add that note to it. Well, it certainly has been a lot of fun. I wish we had some more time to kick it around some more but we don't so so long and see you next time